welcome back to another video of online class with another interesting topic let us start another set of fascinating topic and here we go today we would be coming across with number of topics so before we proceed let's have a look the table of contents first we would be discussing about meaning of drainage followed by drainage system in india bifurcation of rivers lakes river rule and economy and river pollution so begin with this topic first we would be discussing about meaning of drainage dear students as with the definition written here or you could see over the screen the term drainage describes the river system of an area river system of an area means the river when it originates and starts flowing from its origin till its destination it covers the number of area and all those areas which has been covered by the river is known as the drainage system whereas the drainage system or drainage also known as the river system next is the water divide now what is water divide any elevated area such as mountain or an upland separates two drainage basin such an upland is known as water divide it means that when water flows or river flows from its uh, origin between till its destination between its origin to its destination the river come across with number of terrains different kinds of terrains it could be low lying it could be rugged it could be you know all uh, plateaus and number of pieces of rocks it comes across so what happens when different obstacles in forms of uh, uh, stones in their piece of rock come across so what happens in this case the river changes its direction of flowing and that is what called as water divide and here we see with this picture which is shown here stream a and stream b in between there is an uplifted area elevated area elevated means the high area so you could see the river which is flowing in stream a going into different channels going into different directions so what happens that one single river is bifurcated by stream you know bifurcated by the water divide between the center one the elevated area into two different segments that is the stream a and stream b so that is what called as water divide do remember water divide means any elevated area which come across the river which come across in front of the river and divides the river into different channels is called as water divide next is drainage pattern since we discussed about the meaning of drainage and we followed by the water divide the drainage pattern not only in india throughout the world also has been bifurcated into different categories or different parts but in india we have classified into four segments that is dendritic trellis radial and rectangular let's have a look with this picture what it shows here look at here the four pictures are given in front of you that is the first one is dendritic trellis rectangular and the last one is radial before we proceed into this dendritic look at here the in dendritic diagram what happens in this case that it consists of a single main stream and the tributaries resemble the branches of tree you can see the first diagram dendritic look at here the white shaded portion that shows the river and it looks like the branches of trees remember the river which forms or which creates a formation like a branches of tree is called as dendritic pattern next one is trellis pattern in this 
the main stream is joined by short flowing streams it means a short rivers you need to remember this jab bahut sari bahut badi rivers jo hoti hain nadi hoti hain jab wo choti choti nadiyon ke sath jud jati hain to wo ek trellis pattern banata hai you can see here one large main river is joined by a small tributary so that is what trellis next is a radial pattern when we see the radial pattern radial pattern shows that in this the stream flows in different directions from a central peak if you can see the fourth diagram that shows about the radial from the center point the river is bifurcated into different directions so that is what the radial whenever Uh, a river is bifurcated into different channels due to the elevated area which is situated between the flowing of river and then it bifurcates bifurcates matlab divide karna right so when it bifurcates into different channels into different directions and it creates what kind of feature or what kind of pattern that is the radial pattern next one is the rectangular pattern when we say the rectangular pattern it says it is developed on a strongly joined terrain and the drainage follows the joint patterns what it says here you can see a rectangular and trellis looks more or less same but their number of small tributaries joins in trellis number of uh, small tributaries joins the main river whereas in rectangular pattern what happens is that it only a few amount of uh, small tributaries joins the river so that was the drainage pattern let's move on to the next topic that is the himalayan rivers and the peninsular rivers now when we are talking about the drainage pattern here we would be talking about the rivers and we would be talking about the indian rivers and indian rivers are bifurcated into two categories divided into two parts and what are those two parts the first one is the himalayan rivers and second one is the peninsular rivers let's see here that is the himalayan river so now we would begin with himalayan rivers right so himalayan rivers are bifurcated and divided into three categories right what are these three parts that is first one is the indus river system second one the brahmaputra system and third one the ganga river system so these all three rivers comprises as himalayan rivers right so one by one we would be discussing about all these three rivers but before that let's have a look about peninsular rivers now we'll see that which are the rivers comes under peninsular rivers here the first one is narmada second is tapi third godavari fourth mahanadi fifth krishna six kaveri so that is what peninsular rivers all these six rivers compiles as the peninsular rivers so hope you would remember which are the rivers or what are the rivers which comes under the peninsular rivers let's see himalayan rivers now it's a time to talk about himalayan rivers as we discussed in the previous slides that the himalayan rivers are bifurcated into three categories that is the indus the brahmaputra the ganga so one by one we would be talking about the himalayan rivers before we talk about the himalayan rivers it is necessary to see or a map that where does it lies and where does it flow so look at this map here you could see towards the pakistan side you can see the indus river and it has different tributaries a small rivers jo indus hai uski bahut sari tributaries hain jaise jhelum rabi chenab and satluj so this is how the indus river originates right now if you could see here when we talk about the himalayan uh, rivers that is the brahmaputra you can see the nepal side from jammu and kashmir to nepal side you can see here the brahmaputra river the ganga and ganga basically comprises and covers up the main indian states the northern indian states so that was the location of himalayan rivers the indus the ganga and the brahmaputra indus river origin near 
Assam and Sarovar Lake, length 2,900 km, whereas in India, its total length is 709 km, area drain 1,17,844 square km. Area drain means the number of area covered by this river from its origin to its destination. Let's have a look on tributaries, that is Askar, Shirog, Jhelum, Chenab, Ravi, Bias and Satloj. Dear students, do remember these are the important points which is being highlighted from the exam point of view. There are certain important uh, things also about the Indus River which is mentioned towards the right side of your screen. You can have a look and go through with these certain extra informations about the Indus River. Let's move on to the next river that is the Brahmaputra River. Let's see this. Origin southeast Mansarovar Lake. It origins from the southeast direction of the Mansarovar Lake. Its total length also as usual that is the 2,900 kilometer. But in India, its total length is 916 kilometers. Area drain, the number of area covered by this river is 2,85,000 square kilometer. Its tributaries are the Sangpo, Loste, Tista, Subansiri, and Dihang, etc. There are also certain extra information which is I have mentioned here towards your right side of your screen. I would request you to go through once again with the extra information. Next is that is the Ganga River. That is the Gangotri Glacier. It originates from the Gangotri Glaciers. Total length is 2,500 km. Area drained is 1,13,20,000 square km. And tributaries are Yamuna, Ghagra, Gandak, Kosi, Son, Chambal and Betwa. So on your right hand side you could see uh, certain extra information which is being mentioned. I would request you to go through. So these were the important rivers and we have gone through about the Indus, the Ganga and the Brahmaputra. Their origin, their length, area, drain, tributaries which were very important from the uh, exam point of view. But Towards your right hand side, I mentioned certain extra information which I would request you and I would hope that you would go through with these extra information. Next is, let's move on to the next slide that is the Peninsula Rivers. Now from this slide onwards, we would be talking about the Peninsula Rivers one by one. But before that, let's have a look over map the Peninsula Rivers. Look at the location here, the Peninsula River from where it originates. Look at the map here, the Narmada just below the Narmada towards the Arabian side. Look at the towards the Arabian side. Narmada just below that, the Tapi River, Godavari, Krishna, Kaveri, Mahanadi. So these are called as the Peninsula Rivers. Next is the classification of peninsular rivers. The classification of peninsular rivers again divided. We talk about the peninsular rivers. We saw that the peninsular rivers is being divided into different uh, rivers. But when we talk about the peninsular rivers further also bifurcated, divided into two categories. Look at these. That is one is the west flowing river and the second one is the east flowing river. Let's see which are the rivers which comes under west flowing rivers. That is the Narmada and Tapi. Please do remember that Narmada and Tapi comes under the west flowing rivers. Whereas Godavari, Krishna, Mahanadi, Kaveri comes towards the east flowing river. So these were the bifurcation of uh, rivers, peninsula rivers. Next is first peninsular river that is Narmada. Let's see its main features that is the origin near Amarkantak hills in MP. In MP there is a hill called as Amarkantak from there it originates. Its total length is 1300 kilometer. Area drain that is 93,080 square kilometer. Its tributaries are Bayar, Dudhi, Tawa, Heron. So these are the important facts and look at here the certain important information which is mentioned here about river Narmada that is one is Narmada basin covers parts of Madhya Pradesh and Gujarat. All tributaries of the Narmada are very short and most of these join the mainstream at right angle. Jitni bhi Narmada river ki choti choti rivers hain jo main tributaries hain wo bhot choti hain short hain aur wo ek right angle mein jaake Narmada ke join karti hain. Next is about the Tapi River. 
लेट्स हैव अ लुक ऑफ तापी रिवर ओरिजिन बेतुल डिस्ट्रिक्ट इन एमपी कहां से ओरिजिनेट होती है तापी रिवर बेतुल डिस्ट्रिक्ट इन एमपी मध्य प्रदेश में इस टोटल लेंथ इज 792 किलोमीटर्स एरिया ड्रेन 64750 स्क्वायर किलोमीटर ट्रिब्यूटरीज आर पूर्ण बेतुल लवादा एटसेट्रा सो दीस आर द इंपॉर्टेंट फीचर्स ऑफ Tapi River. As usual, I have mentioned certain important things about Tapi River. I would request to go through again, but I would read out few important things that the Tapi River, also known as Tapi, and is a river in Central India between Godavari and Narmada. You do, you need to remember this. The Tapi River flows between Narmada and uh, Godavari River, and which flows. Westward before draining into the Arabian Sea. Next river, Mahanadi River. Let's see its important features. That is, uh, it originates from Raipur districts of Chhattisgarh. Please do remember, Mahanadi originates. कहाँ से originate होती है? Raipur district of Chhattisgarh. Length is 885 kilometer. Area drained is 64,750 square kilometer. Tributaries are Purna, Betu, Lavada, etc. Again, certain information that Mahanadi rises in the highlands of Chhattisgarh. It flows through Odisha to reach the Bay of Bengal. Okay, Bay of Bengal is its destination. Here, or Bay of Bengal, me, jaane se pehle, you which state ko cover karti hai? That is the Odisha. And the length of the river about 860 kilometer. But please do remember, the, this is the information which I have written. 860. Don't get confused. It was mentioned in your textbook. But the exact length, when I talk about, it is 885 kilometers. Right? Next, it says drain uh, drainage basin is. शेड बाय महाराष्ट्र छत्तीसगढ़ झारखंड एंड उड़ीसा जो महानदी रिवर है वो कितने स्टेट्स को कवर करती है दैट इज महाराष्ट्र छत्तीसगढ़ झारखंड एंड उड़ीसा एंड फाइनली इट फॉल्स टू बे ऑफ बिंगो Now next is the Godavari. It is very important river when we talk about the Peninsular River. One of the Peninsular River. It is the longest Peninsular River in India. When we compile up the all Peninsular River, out of that the Godavari is one of the longest river. Its features are originates from Nasik district of Maharashtra. Total length is 1,500 kilometers. Area drain. Total area it covers that is 3 lakh 24,000 square. Kilometer. Its tributaries are Purna, Vardha, Purnhita, Manjira, Vain Ganga, and Pain Ganga. These are the important tributaries. That is the important information which I quoted here. The next one is. It drains into Bay of Bengal. कहाँ पे इसका destination? That is the Bay of Bengal. Its drainage basin is also the largest among the Peninsula River. Please do remember that the Godavari also is known as Dakshin Ganga. Please do remember if the question comes, name the river which is known as which also known as the Dakshin Ganga. So the correct answer would be Godavari. Now move on to next uh, river that is the river Krishna. It originates from Mahabaleshwar, Maharashtra. Total length is 1,400 kilometers. Total area it covers that is 2 lakh 60,000 square kilometers. Tributaries are Koina, Panchganga, Dud, uh, Dudhganga, and Tungabhadra. Musi, Bhima, etc. And the important features, certain important things that the rising from a spring near Mahabaleshwar, the Krishna flows for about 1,400 kilometers and reaches the Bay of Bengal. Right. So that is what it reaches. So Bay of Bengal, the area, the states which is covered by Krishna River, that is the Maharashtra, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh. Last river. That is the Kaveri. Kaveri originates from uh, Brahmagiri Hills. Its total length is 765 kilometer. Area drain 72,000 square kilometer. Tributaries are Amravati and Shiva, etc. The Kaveri River rises in the Brahmagiri range of the Western Ghats and reaches to Bay of Bengal. Bay of Bengal ni girne se pehle ye Western Ghats se hoke nikalti hain and then in south of 
Kudalur in Tamil Nadu, right? It crosses Kaveri, crosses Karnataka also from Karnataka, then Kerala, Tamil Nadu, and then finally it reaches to Bay of Bengal. Next is the lakes of India. So far we have covered about the Himalayan rivers and the peninsula rivers. You have gone through the important features of the Himalayan rivers as well as the peninsula rivers. Now it's the time to talk about the lakes of India. Now that is the Hula Lake and Sambhal Lake. When we talk about the Hula Lake, remember Hula Lake is very important. It is the largest fresh lake in Asia situated in Bandipora district of Jammu and Kashmir. Whereas we are very aware about it, Sambhal Lake, it is situated in Rajasthan. This lake receives water from five rivers. Please do remember, very important thing is, quite fascinating thing, that this Sambhal Lake receives water from five rivers and these rivers are Medh uh, Medhata, Samud, Mantha, Rupangra, and Khari and Khandela. So it is an extensive saline wetland. Saline means it is salty. Hai. Is mein salt ka content is hai. And it is India's largest inland salt lake. Hai. India is the largest inland salt lake. Hai. Look at the location of these two lakes. That is Wooler Lake. Wooler Lake you could see over here on the map. That is the state of Jammu and Kashmir where it is in Bandipura district. Another thing is the Sambha Lake, it is in the state of Rajasthan. Next move on to the another lake that is the Chilika Lake. It is the largest coastal lagoon in India and the second largest Bakshik water lagoon in the world. I would say lagoon in the sense means जो एक salt bar create करता है, salt का जो एक bar होता है, उस तरीके से जो बनता है, उसे हम lagoon कहते हैं, Chilika Lake is quite famous for preparing a uh, formation of lagoons. Next is Kuleru Lake. Kuleru Lake is one of the largest freshwater lake in India locate, locates in Andhra Pradesh and forms the largest shallow freshwater lake in Asia. Next is the Pulikat Lake. Pulikat Lagoon is the largest Bakshik water lagoon in India. And after Chilika Lake, Pulikat Lagoon is considered to be the second largest. Let's have a look in map that is the location of these three important lakes. When we talk about the Pulikat, it is in the state of Tamil Nadu, Koleru, it is in the state of Andhra Pradesh, followed by Chilika and the state of Odisha. Next is the economic value of lakes. We have talked about different important lakes of India. But what is the importance of lakes for a country, right? for a human being, for a nation? So we talk about economic value. It is very important. Lakes are of great value to human beings. But how? The lakes help to regulate the flow of a river and during heavy rains, it prevents flooding and during the dry season, it helps to maintain an even flow of water. Do remember, the lakes are important. It helps to regulate the flow of river. The river ka jo flow is to regulate it. It doesn't stop. It keeps it in the Another thing, during the time of less rainfall. So, when less rainfall happens, the lakes are very important. Uska pani use use kiya jata hai, uska water use kiya jata hai and lakes can also be used for developing hydro power, right? Hydro power, hydrological power when we talk about, so that is helps to develop hydro power, then uh, moderate the climate of the surrounding, take hai? Moderate the climate of the surrounding ka matlab hai ki jahaan pe bhi lake hoti hai, uske aas paas ka area thoda sa thanda rehta hai, reason being jo lake hai, waha ke temperature ko thoda sa kam rehta hai and the second next one is, maintain the aquatic ecosystem right jo ecosystem hai hamara usme aquatic hai fish hai aur bhi jo water bodies ke jo animals hai mammals hai wo sari cheeze isme jan leti hain to usko bhi maintain ye rakhta hai enhances the natural beauty ye natural beauty ko enhance karta hai our lakes also can be used for irrigation purpose to develop tourism and to provide recreation recreation ka matlab kya hai fun activities ke liye bhi lakes use ki jati hain, right? Next topic is, that is
the role of river in economy kya kya role hain we have seen about it so far we have discussed about the role of uh, lakes in indian economy now we will be talking about the role of rivers in indian economy the first role is hydropower river is very important to produce hydroelectricity it helps important role even the vital role to prepare or to produce the hydroelectricity नेक्स्ट इज नेविगेशन नेविगेशन का मतलब क्या होता है टू मूव फ्रॉम शिप राइट टू मूव बाय शिप फ्रॉम वन प्लेस टू अनदर प्लेस नेविगेशन का मतलब है टू मूव फ्रॉम वन एरिया टू अनदर एरिया सो नेविगेशन इज डन फॉर टू पर्पसेस इधर इट कुड बी फॉर ट्रेड एंड कॉमर्स एंड इट कुड बी यू नो रीचिंग फ्रॉम वन प्लेस टू अनदर प्लेस next is the irrigation river also is very important the water of river is being used for irrigation purpose next is that is the river pollution when we talk about the river pollution is uh, you know when we talk about river pollution that is your national river conservation plan now we have we need not to forget about the river pollution because when we talk about the rivers when we talk about the humans such a huge population day by day we are developing ourselves whether it is a industry for everything we need a water and somewhere the water is being polluted right so uske liye india ne kuch step liya tha स्टेप क्या था नेशनल रिवर कंजर्वेशन प्लान नाउ व्हाट इज द नेशनल रिवर कंजर्वेशन प्लान इट मींस अकॉर्डिंग टू दैट टू मेंटेन द क्वालिटी ऑफ रिवर maintain the quality of river ka matlab kya hai that the water should not be polluted it should be taken care of so for that it was started and initiated let me just read out very quickly for you people that river cleaning program in the country was initiated and started with the launching of the ganga action plan in 1985 ye kab shuru hua tha 1985 mein hua tha and the ganga action plan was expanded to cover the rivers under the national river conservation plan in the year of 1990 5 uske baad the objective of the nrcp is to improve the water quality of the rivers as i said the quality kis cheez ki water ki quality water ka jo pani hai jo lakes ka pani hai chahe wo water ka pani that should not be contaminated through industrial effluents through our uh, human activities wo gandi nahi honi chahiye it should be pure enough and which are major water source of the country so far that is about the national river conservation so that's all in today's class i hope you would have enjoyed this fascinating topic and i would request you to go through once again and take care of yourself in this pandemic situation have a good day bye bye to all.